Hi there, this is Valentine and thank you so much for joining me for a new tutorial. This time we're going to take a first look at the newest feature in Postman. It's called the Visualizer and it allows you to create really, really nice graphs and other displays of your data right within Postman. And this is how it looks like. Uh, and we're going to start very, very small and first to understand what exactly is this thing all about? Why do we need the Visualizer, what it can do and everything. So typically API responses are sometimes very hard to read and understand and especially if you have a lot of data that data is not so easily visualized and most of the time to have like a graphical representation of what you have is much better than just having raw data typically in JSON format. So in Postman visualizations are just a script that transforms the data that you have in this very, very nice representations of the data. This is a bar chart. So it's much easier for anybody, even if something is not a technical person and cannot read JSON, it's still much easier to look at something like this and to tell something from the data. So what Postman has done with this feature it has made it very easy to take some raw data and visualize it and opens Postman read to many more users than originally has because now you don't need a front end anymore that takes this raw JSON data to display it. You can do basic visualizations in Postman as well. So that's definitely a great thing. And here is a combination between JavaScript, HTML, and most commonly CSS for styling purposes. And you can take advantage for free of this new functionality if you update to the latest Postman version. You should be able to see here in the body part of the request. Pretty is pre-selected, but if you go to visualize, you'll be able to see this. Now, this doesn't work out of the box. You need to write some scripts and I will explain you a bit how this looks like and how you can get started with it. But first of all, with a very simple example. So take this one. I have a simple request. This request is sending back some data. It's simply an array of contacts. So nothing very fancy and visualization that I have created here is a simple table. So as I said, nothing extraordinary, but still something that's doable with a new visualizer. So the way this works is the following. In the test tab, you have now the opportunity of creating a template and what you write inside this variable template or whatever you decide to call it is HTML and can add JavaScript as well. So this is the HTML template that is being displayed here. And with the help of handlebars, which is a templating library in JavaScript, you can go over the response. So this is the response data contacts, which matches what I have here. This is the response data context from the structure point of view. And you'll be able to go over each row. So iterate over everything and you will get it here easily displayed. So this is a very simple example created for you to have like this understanding of what's going on. And what has changed now in Postman is that you have this additional function here, pm.visualizer.set. You set a template as a first parameter, as a second parameter, you create an object and this object has a property called response and you just put here the response body. So this is how this binding of information works and Postman will take this and generate this for you. In another example, you can add, of course, CSS to the game and make everything look much nicer. Of course, the more things you add, the more code you will have in your template and the harder it will be to debug. But if you want to have like very nice designs, for example, like this one, then you'll have to add even additional code. So this is an external JavaScript library. It's called chart.js, but you can add any libraries you want. And this makes it possible to generate this very nice charts here. So the chart.js documentation, if you go and read it, you will be able to see that you can do a lot of charts. You go to samples, you can select between different kind of charts that are available. So there's absolutely no limitation when it comes to this. You just need to remember that you will need to have a good understanding on how to get this running. So again, the principle here stays the same. You have this template and right here at the bottom, you use pm.visualizer.set. And additionally, there is uh, this method pm.kdata. This creates a binding between the chart and the template. Basically, this is the method and how you can inject this information in the template so that it looks so nice as this one. Now, obviously, in order to get started with this, you need to have a good understanding of how HTML works how CSS works and how JavaScript works. And typically, if you're not already familiar with these, 
you may have a hard time getting started and understanding why things don't work or how exactly what exactly you need to do. So what I recommend you do if you are not familiar with these technologies, you can get started with existing examples. So what you can do, you can go in Postman here to new, select templates and you can search for example for visualizer and you will find here visualizer examples. Uh, this is like a keyword to look for some information. So you can easily find some existing examples in order to get you started so that you understand the principles, but you really need to have a good understanding of how HTML, CSS and JavaScript work in order to take full advantage of this functionality. Now, if somebody else does the job for you, it will be quite easy to use because you don't need to do anything else. Now in the development process, you need to remember that things may not work. So for example, here I'm iterating over this data structure, but if I was to remove something, I will just click send and nothing will be displayed. So you need to be very mindful about how this piece of data works here. When you're working with JavaScript, if there are any errors, what you can do is you can go on this visualize part, you can right click on it, inspect visualization, a new window will open up up, you have here a console and you will be able to inspect the contents of what has been rendered here. So if you're already familiar with Chrome developer tools, then this is already integrated in Postman because it's an Electron app and this will make your developing life much easier. Now, not everything is perfect, especially for a feature that it's still in beta. It was practically just introduced. And I think the overall feedback has been very positive. A lot of people find this very, very useful. And actually in the beginning, I didn't see that it had the purpose, but after using it, I am actually quite a big fan of it because it has personally saved so much of my time because I have these APIs that I constantly work with. And in the past, I was forced to create like a front-end application, either using React.js or Angular in order to easily visualize the data that I have there. But now I can just have everything in Postman. I can have a collection and I can have a visualization with that collection and works great. Still, there are some limitations and you should be aware of them if you're going on this path. First of all, as you can notice here in the template, there's absolutely no syntax highlighting. So what that means is that you will either have to do your development in a separate HTML file so that you can see what you're writing and how things are going and then try to merge everything in Postman. But otherwise, even if you introduce a very small error, you will not be able to directly see it here. And just writing code in this format is not very, very nice to put it that way. And this is definitely something that could be optimized. Additionally, what uh, many people find confusing is the new functionality has been introduced in the test tab. Now this has nothing to do with tests. And if you already have tests with your collection, mix templates and this visualization with a test and make your entire code look a bit messy. So it's a mixture of concerns. Actually, I would like very much to have the opportunity to add or attach files to the collection and not abuse the tests for everything. But this is the way how this prototype currently works and currently we'll have to live with what it can do. But still, it is really, really powerful. There are other limitations when it comes to this. Uh, you cannot simply go on this graph and explain Export it or save it as a file, as an image or PDF file that doesn't work. You cannot make it full screen. So if you have like a very large visualization, you cannot go in full screen mode and take a better look at it. You will have to like drag every window that you have around Postman if you have like a very, very dense data set that you need to look into. Otherwise, this is the only option that there is currently. It works great if you have JSON responses, but if you're working with XML a lot, you will really need to transform that XML typically before you can work with visualizations, but there's not like a restriction that you cannot work with XML and SOAP-based web services. So that's definitely a possibility. As you can see, there's a long list of limitations. There are a few things that I've still noticed. I wanted to tell you right from the beginning so that you know in what you're getting into. Additionally, these visualizations will not work in Newman or in any automation tools. So you will not get HTML reports that contain this. You will not have them in the collection runner. So there are still limitations. If your data set is large, you may notice within the Postman app that a lot of memory will be consumed by this in order to render all this data. So if your response is really, really large, it will take a bit for all of this to render. And if your computer doesn't have enough memory, you may notice that Postman may get a bit sluggish when you have such data. But this is just a general limitation of JavaScript and what you what you can do with the tool. Actually, I've noticed that even on pretty large data sets, it still performed very, very well. So I don't complain about that. So one last thing. I'm 
typically working with another Postman theme, I like much better because of the contrast to work on the darker version of Postman. Of course, when you switch this on, not all the visualizations will work. So what you need to pay attention if you are creating such visualizations for many users of the app, that you include like a white background or something like that. Otherwise, this will not look very well. Um, this won't look very well either because everything is black on black. But of course, here, if you have a background, looks already much nicer. So something to keep in mind that you can switch the theme in Postman and it does infer with the visualizer a bit. So that's about it. I know I haven't gotten into a really lot of details. I will link you in the video description a lot of templates that you can check out. And if I discover anything cool, I will add it to the video description. I hope this gave you an overview of the visualizer and that you are now excited to integrate this in your collections. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel and see you next time at another Postman tutorial for comments and anything else. Visit the comment section. See you next time, guys. Bye bye.